Hello guys, welcome back to a new YouTube video. It's Game Master and welcome. Today we're gonna watch IMR Scary Tales on YouTube. We're gonna be reacting to it, and I'm not gonna be reacting by myself, but I'm also gonna be reacting with my cousin Leo. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Game Master. My name is Leo. Yeah. So we ready to get tuned in. Make sure to grab your snacks and let's tune in, boys. We've exiled him now. He will never be allowed back. Not after it. It was extremely late at night. My parents were out and I was left alone in the house. For the past couple of weeks, my uncle had been staying around for the winter holiday. My parents quite liked him because they found him funny, but I despised him. Every day he would always give me this horrid stare. It started off in the direction of my face, but the longer he stared, the further down my body he would look. Mm, Disgusting. Pedophile. When I had tried to tell my parents about it, they simply laughed and said, he's probably just joking or something. He left one morning without anyone oh, seeing him go. <laughs> he left a message saying he had to rush out somewhere. I can't recall where. As I was lying in bed watching Netflix, I shivered, even thinking about him. Suddenly, a notification rang out from my phone. I grabbed it. It was a snap ad request. Immediately, I was distracted as I hit accept and waited for the guy who had added me to respond. Hey, X, the message read. I giggled and replied, Hey, XX. There was a pause for a moment as his bitmoji waited on the screen, staring at me. I typed, You look really sexy. What do you mean by that? Sexy. Hey, yeah. I gasped. I was a little surprised, to say the least, until I thought about the fact this guy hadn't seen me. I hadn't even sent a snap yet. Thanks, haha. -ha. How do you know? He didn't reply. His bitmoji vanished, and I was left sat in chat, alone. I put the phone down, and for a moment, I thought it was just another guy wanting to play with my feelings, like always. My eyebrows lifted as another snap came through. It was from him again. Though so this time, it was a snap. Excitedly, I opened it. My entire stomach fell flat with dread. I was looking at a picture of me in bed, oh, no. staring at my phone. I couldn't move. The flash came from my wardrobe. I put my Who, who's right there? No reply. Dad? Mom, the wardrobe door slowly began to creak open. I saw the glint of his <gasps> face emerging from the darkness. My uncle stared at me, his mouth widened into a thick and revolting grin. Hello, Jane. Carefully, he crawled out of the wardrobe, stretching as he placed each foot one by one onto the floor. He let the phone drop to the floor. I've been so patient. I stared at him, my eyes filled with terror. I quivered and shrank back, slinking to the other side of the bed as I tried to distance myself from him. Under the covers, I held my phone. I began recording a voice message. Y You're a creep! He cackled and shifted about in place. Oh, how excited you make me. How excited you've always made me. His laugh came to an abrupt halt Ugh, as his face awesome. dropped in its expression. Ugh. He looked at me no. hungrily. I felt tears begin to well in my eyes as I reached the end of the bed. I had to stand up. As I Brother. left the safety net Ugh. of my covers, I swept back until my spine touched the wall. He smirked. Where do you go now, Jane? He began reaching into his pocket. Don't! Better, I shrieked. He, he ignored me and continued to stare as he inched towards the bed. Soon enough, he reached it and clambered on top, moving slowly, carefully as if to not disturb me. His hand stayed in his pocket, locked in, waiting. Two days, Jane. I've been waiting two days in that bloody wardrobe. I did it for you. Can't you see that? 
my skin whipples with fear as I imagined him watching me sleep those two nights, watching me change. Vile. Get away! I screamed at him as he climbed down from the bed. He stood in front of me. For a moment, he said nothing, only staring at me as I shrank down onto the floor, petrified. Suddenly, something snapped in him. Don't you dare speak to me like that, little girl! He grabbed me by the arm and hauled me upwards. He then threw me to the ground and cackled as I tried squirming away. He loved it. I almost made it to my feet when he stomped on my back, pushing me down against the floor. Now, Jane, let me show you why you should have stayed silent, wretched little... The noise of the door opening downstairs cut him off. Both of us swiveled our heads to my bedroom door. Immediately, I screamed with all the capacity of my lungs, wailing for my parents to come and help. In an instant, the sound of footsteps came stampeding up the stairs. A tear drooled from my eye. I was saved. I was silenced soon after with a sharp kick to the head. I woke up what felt like hours later. My parents had asked me what had happened, why I was lying on the floor unconscious, and why the window had a gaping hole in it. I leapt into their arms and grabbed my phone. The voice message had recorded everything. As I showed it to them, my mom fled out of the room, tears draining from her eyes as she vomited in the bathroom. My dad, on the other hand, visibly enraged, sprinted to grab the landline. The police arrived around 30 minutes later. My parents showed them the voice message, the smashed window, and the quivering child, me. They then went through and asked each and every one of the family if they had seen my uncle. None of them knew where he was. To this day, we don't. He vanished the morning he originally left. Since then, I have forever remained damaged. I don't trust any man in my family other than my father, and my wardrobe has been demolished and removed from my room. Yet every night, I check everywhere. Who knows? He might be hiding again. I was bored. The snowstorm made it nearly impossible for me to leave the house for the past few days. And while I had food and mostly everything that I needed, I was at my wit's end. I desperately wanted to do something. Being a psychiatrist, I was used to my brain constantly being busy. From one appointment to the other, I rarely had time to chill or even to close my eyes for a second. And that was how I liked things. I could have called my patients, perhaps, but most had decided to opt out of therapy for the holidays. They felt better with their families, which rendered me practically useless. I hated that. And so I decided to try to make myself helpful and not bored somehow. I hadn't touched Snapchat in years, so I'm not entirely sure what caused me to download it and not something else, but yeah, it didn't really matter in the long run. Something you should do. I took a few photos and even a video or two of myself grinning at the camera. I was very good at that, pretending to be happy. So since I have nothing better to do, I would love to give everyone advice. I ended my monologue with a wave and rolled onto my stomach, waiting for the DMs to pour in. See, I've always been attractive, which made it fairly easy to find friends like this when I was at my lowest and needed someone to care for, perhaps. Still, it was mostly good fun, I just wanted to help people who were struggling during the winter months. Within seconds, my phone pinged. Hi, sorry, but I need someone to listen to me. Can I call you? I hesitated. I knew nothing about this, Elias, and, well, it was weird to move to the calling phase so quickly, but still, I did want to help. I'd rather text for now, but once we know each other a bit better and I know how to help you, sure. Stranger danger was engraved into me, even as an adult. Oh, uh, okay. That sounds good. That was the first time something weird happened. The screen of my phone flickered twice. Colors drained from the messages right in front of my eyes. I was staring at my inbox in black and white. Quite an odd thing. What the? Is this a new filter or am I going mad? 
Within seconds, everything went back to normal. I... I have a secret, Vicky. Huh? How did he guess my nickname? I mean, it wasn't impossible, per se, but still. Would it help you to share it with a stranger? Maybe, but I need to make sure that I can trust you. Okay, that was somewhat specific, but nothing new. I was prepared to tell him an embarrassing, somewhat exaggerated secret of mine, but the screen flickered again. Okay, this is weird. Maybe I downloaded the wrong version of the app? I need you to tell me what happened 10 years ago on this day. Oh. I mean, that was easy. I was in high school, probably getting ready for prom. You must be that dumb if you download the off-brand Snapchat. <laughs> if you off- Bro, if you upload the off-brand Snapchat, you might as well see an elephant on the Snapchat app, bro. How do you upload the off-brand Snapchat, bro? It's all new to know, bro. Especially, like, how do you down something when you can't even download it? Like him, he doesn't have a phone. You know what I mean? Like, that's even crazy, bro. I got you. I didn't remember exactly what I must have been doing, of course, but still. I was in high school like most other teens my age, probably out shopping. Yes. That's enough information for me. Okay, that was a bit odd. I tried to rack my brain, but nothing in particular came up. Maybe this Elias was an old friend who found me and decided to pull a prank on me. I mean, it wasn't that hard to find me, I guess. I was all over social media with my other accounts, so... Uh, are you sure? Yep. Okay. But how can I trust you if you're not willing to tell me everything about you? The word everything was glitching in and out of the text. I swallowed hard. Something really was weird. Hey, yo, Sorry, but I can't help you then. I need to go now. Bye. I made a new account, thinking that maybe something was just off with my current one. Maybe it was weird kids playing a prank on me or something. No matter what I tried to post, there was a strange filter stuck on my face. It said, it said liar with skulls around it. Okay, maybe some people don't realize that Halloween has been over for months now. Vicky. I threw my phone on the ground frightened. A distorted voice, quiet but almost familiar, came from my phone. Where had I heard it before? Wait. Elias? You remembered me? Good. Uh, I'm glad. What? But no, th that can't be. I quivered in my seat. I knew there was no way, and yet... I want you to write a post about how much you hate everyone. Embarrass yourself in front of all your friends. Excuse me? Now, I will tell everyone what happened ten years ago. You do remember, don't you? Memories rushed me. Ones of laughter, snow, and pain. Was it... Was it really ten years ago? We were kids, Elias. We didn't mean it. And yet, I did everything he told me. He told me to take pictures with my old stuffed toys, pretending to be a kid... I did it. My online friends asked me if I was all right. I told them that I was just feeling a bit homesick. He told me to feign a fit and curse out the pizza delivery guy in our town. Rumors spread across the internet about the rude chick who shouted at the poor guy who was just trying to do his job. Elias would ask me to do something and I would do it. I had no choice. I begged him to just let me go. I tried to convince him that it was time for his soul to rest. But when I said that, my phone overheated, burning my hand. It was all just a game to him, and yet I did everything. You, you won't tell anyone, right? Please, you know that I didn't mean it. I know, and I won't. I felt relieved. I knew that what I'd done 10 years ago was wrong, but I didn't want anyone else to know. Boy, it was a come prank here. Hey. Anyway, it wasn't Noink. my fault, Noink. Elias. Bro, I'm you. But you will. I'm safe here, bro. I... I can't believe I'm no doing this, but... House, and if not, I'll throw it's these been over on ten them. years. I need to come clean about what happened to Elias Smith. 
me and my three friends. I wanted to play truth or dare, but we needed someone, someone who we could embarrass. <laughs> we were too cool to do stupid things like kiss each other or something. And so um, we chose Elias, who was the loser of our class. He had a crush on me. I dared him to go outside in the snowstorm in his underwear and socks and run up and down the main road since most cars couldn't drive during that time. Yeah, how, how did he get in the house? I told him that if he did it, I'd story. date him, though I was just lying. Elias, he, like, how do people not know? he went out, I'm sleeping, bro. but he, he never made it back. To this day, he's missing, and we have no idea what had happened to him. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Elias. I really am. I, I became a psychiatrist oh. to deal with this, to help people who were like you. But all I've ever been is a big hypocrite, a disgusting bully. And now you've taken everything from me. Are you happy? <laughs> Story three, last story, boys. There's last not story. a day I wake up without thinking that life is really mysterious. From the moment you wake up every day, you don't know how your life can change from one moment to the next. You don't know if something special will happen to you, if your life will take a turn, or if it will be just another normal, boring day. Another thing you don't know either is if it will be the worst day of your life. That day, the worst day of my life, caught me totally off guard. And believe it or not, it started with a simple Snapchat message. It all started during a normal weekday night. My husband, Ethan, is a doctor and usually works night hours. So I tend to spend my nights alone. At first, I was quite worried about it, but over time, I got used to it and just went on with my life. I admit that I even benefited from this since being a writer, I had the whole house to myself and I could concentrate more easily. That night, I was gonna take it easy. I was just gonna eat, go to sleep, as I was very tired and wanted to see my husband in the morning. After dinner, I was about to go take a shower when a Snapchat message caught my attention. When I saw the message, it was from an unknown person who was following each other and my husband. Once I accepted the message request, I read it and a sudden feeling of panic came over me. The message said that I had to go to the hospital as soon as possible, as an unstable patient attacked Ethan, so he was in serious condition. Almost without hesitation, I ran to get my car keys and go see my husband, but something caught my attention. Normally, I would have rushed over, desperate to see what was wrong with Ethan, but that night, I can't explain why, but when I saw a news item on TV, I just stared at it for a few seconds. On the news, a young reporter said that kidnapping cases were increasing exponentially in the state and that we must take all possible precautions to avoid being another victim. Feeling even guilty for doubting the man on Snapchat, I called my husband, but no one picked up. I rushed to the front door of my house, but as I was about to open it, something popped into my head. At first, I thought they had no way to contact me besides Snapchat since Ethan had his phone blocked and no one could find out my number. But Ethan has my number in case of an emergency. Why would they have to look me up on Snapchat? Before opening the exit door, I decided to write another message to the guy on Snapchat. I asked him for a picture of Ethan on the gurney to confirm that what he was telling me was real. Up until that point, the guy on Snapchat who was supposedly a coworker of Ethan's, had been replying to me pretty quickly, as if he was paying attention to my messages. But at that moment when I doubted him, something changed. Instead of a message, I received a picture. That was a picture taken at this moment. The picture was of the front door of my house, and through the little window in the door, you could see the back of my head. Shocked by what I had just seen, I looked out the window of the door and saw them. There were two silhouettes in the dark, standing there, looking in my direction, unafraid 
that I would see them. I ran to the dining room where I knew they couldn't see me and quickly called the police. At that very moment, the power in the house went out and the glass in the front and back windows shattered. Someone wanted to hurt me, and it wasn't just one person. I knew I had to hide until the police arrived. Stalling for time was my only salvation. I hid under the couch in the dining room, praying that no one would find me. And that's when I saw them. My house started to fill up with feet walking around, probably looking for me. There were at least three people in the house, all wearing terrifying masks, and they were splitting up and covering the exit doors. The man in the mask with the smile was in charge of checking the dining room, and I felt he was pretty close to finding me. Knocking on all the tables and furniture, he was getting closer and closer to the couch. If he came closer and knocked it over, what could I do? Should I try to tack it? Should I try to run away? Neither option seemed good. The man was a few steps away from me. Was I supposed to be there? But that was impossible. The chair had a cloth on the bottom that gave the impression that the base was touching the ground. It was impossible for him to imagine that I was here. Once the man was next to the chair, his feet were almost touching my hands. I held my breath as long as I could. I froze in fear and my body went numb to the possibility of being caught. Where were the police? What was taking them so long? I couldn't hold back a second longer. I couldn't control the tears coming out of my eyes and I had to cover my mouth to keep from making noise. Everyone thinks I could handle a situation like this, but no one knows what it feels like to have something like this actually happen to you. I wanted to scream, to run, cry. I was panicking next to a man who was looking for me to do who knows what to me. Suddenly, I felt an impact on the couch. Had I been discovered? No, the impact was different. The man who was looking for me kicked it in frustration. She's not here either. I searched the whole dining room. We should leave. I think she's called the police. I made it. They weren't finding me. I breathed a sigh of relief as the man sat on the couch above me. I closed my eyes waiting for them to leave. As they said, the police would be here any minute. The man above cut the call short and I heard him begin to type a message. should have put your cell phone on silent mode. Defenseless against my attacker, the man grabbed me and hugged me so I couldn't run away. His companions quickly joined him, putting a cloth bag over my face and tying me up. I could only kick and scream helplessly, stopping only to beg for mercy. I could feel a man pick me up and begin to carry me away from my home. I heard the sounds of a car door and someone throwing me into the suitcase. The car started up and sped off. I can't explain how horrible that moment was. I felt that my life was over and that I would never see my loved ones again. I used the last of my energy to cry. This was the end. Suddenly, I felt a loud bang in the car and I hurt my head hitting the back of the trunk. Dizzy, I heard gunshots and saw how a few seconds later, someone opened the trunk. They weren't the men in the masks, they were cops. Apparently, I was not the only person who called the police, as my neighbors also saw strange people in front of my house and alerted them as Tell well. Neighbors. I was taken to the hospital where, ironically, I met my husband, who was safe and sound. I told him everything that happened, and at that moment, he realized he didn't have his cell phone and hadn't found it all day. Regarding the telegram man, I didn't know him. I just followed him back a few weeks ago. At that moment, I realized that all the kidnappings were coldly planned and carried out with time and patience. I was also about to be a victim of these people, but somehow I survived. I'll tell you the truth. I don't really have a moral or anything from the story. I only learned that the world is much darker than I thought and how from one day to the next, with a simple Snapchat message, your life can end.